Welcome to Friends and Neighbors. We are always so thankful that you have taken this time to join us. And I am delighted to be with a guest co-host with me, <laughs> Julie Cruz. And by the way, I'm Sandra Hi. O'Neill. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'll introduce Sandra. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness, Julie, it's been a little bit. I know, we were just talking about yes. that. Yes. I'm happy to have you I'm here. so glad to be here. Yes. And, and see you know, everybody again. Yeah. I know, it's been awesome. And you know, one of the things that we were kind of chatting about in the, in the green room is finding our identity in Christ. Yes. It's so yes. hard. It is so hard walking our lives daily. And without the word of God, yes. I don't know, well, I know where I would be and people <laughs> wouldn't want to know me. I will tell you that I'm grateful for the word of God. But I am really thrilled for you uh, to get to know a guest that's with us, Sarah Ott Deaton. She is the founder of Establish Her, which just talks, Mainly about finding your identity mm -hmm. in the Word of God. So will you help me join and welcome Sarah to the set. Yay. Thank y'all so much for having me and any chance I get to talk about Jesus Christ is oh. life-giving to me. Yeah. So I'm honored to be here and get to talk to all of y'all. Well, it's fun to have you here. Yes, and I know is. you've got, we've got such a kindred spirit. Mm -hmm. And you know, today yeah. I'm really struggling because I feel like my words aren't coming out right. And it's just been one of those days, you mm -hmm. know, but I just, I, I, I'm so grateful that you are here to tell your story mm -hmm. about how Establish Her yes. was birthed. Yeah. So can you tell yeah, me? Yeah, sure. Um, I've often said that Jesus takes everything yep. to become everything. And so about 14 years ago, as a believer, kind of grew up in ministry, my dad was a pastor, had a deep understanding, a deep faith in the Lord, but as we all know, life happens. Yeah. Yes. And life can either cause you to run to Christ or cause you to run from him. And for me, I had an, an honest, innocent desire, especially for marriage, to glorify the Lord. I wanted to have a story mm -hmm. that just rang everybody in to Christ. And for me, it was Jesus plus that. Mm. You owe me that. That's powerful. I've done it the right way. Yeah. I've followed you. I'm a PK, a pastor's kid. Checked Come off on, all the Lord. list. You yeah. owe this to me. You owe me a husband that's going to love you. We're going to write a book and have the story about you. Well, about 14 years ago, I was. I was engaged to who I thought was the man of my dreams. And I later realized the man of my dreams wasn't the man of my prayers. Mm. Two different men. And I was young. I was 19. <clears throat> and the Lord had to break me. And honestly, I think that's kind of where he wrote that phrase on my heart, Sarah, Jesus plus something equals nothing. But when Jesus is enough, you yes. get everything. Yes. And so for me, I mean, we were very close to our wedding date. We were engaged and the Lord delivered me from what I thought I wanted. And it was the most difficult, painful, yet purposeful uh, movement of God in my life. And it drove me really to the reality of Sarah, I alone have to establish you. Mm. It is not what I do for you, what I give you, and frankly, it's not what you do for me. That I've done everything right That's and you right. owe it to me. Father, it is living in the finished work of Jesus and what he did for me. Yes. And when he is enough, mm. when he is my shepherd, and I am his sheep, oh, yes. then I don't have any wants mm. beyond what he wants to give me. And so in that season, I, I overstepped my boundary and I wanted beyond what God wanted to give me. And so, you know, six, seven weeks shy of my wedding, the Lord wow. shattered it. And answered my prayer, though sometimes <laughs> he answers our prayer and it hurts, you know. But he said, Sarah, I want to I want to establish you mm. in me, not what I give you, not with a man on your arm or you being a trophy to some man. I want my identity to be in Christ and him and me. And so the verse he gave me, I just have to read this because it's been a life verse of mine. And really the anchor verse to establish her is after, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish yes, you. Yes. And I remembered reading that verse going, Lord, I feel nothing close to establishment. Yeah. I quit my job. I was supposed to move to Dallas. I didn't have a place to live. Now I don't have a husband. My name didn't change, but my identity did. 
And that's when he revealed to me, Sarah, I can change you. That's what I died and rose again to do, mm. was transform you from the inside out. It has nothing to do with how busy you are for me. It has nothing to do with what you think I owe you. It has everything to do with your identity hidden in me. I am enough. And he was my savior. He was my Lord, but he was not my life. Mm. So my I, life was I plus. I do have a question yeah. about this. Is that okay? Yeah, please. Um, so a lot of people are looking for quick fixes to get out of stuff, and they're expecting a quick, instantaneous healing after the choices they made mm -hmm. to engage in something that was not what the Lord wanted. Sure. So was that, did that happen to you? Did you have an instantaneous healing, or did you well, go through the grief and oh, process of, oh, sure. I messed up, and... You know, a great question, and I think honestly, Julie, for me, I knew, though it was painful, that God was delivering me from myself. Yes. And so we had That's good. we had been in this relationship. We were we were pure in that relationship in, in many ways, but then a lot of impurity in the sense of my emotions. Mm -hmm. I gave my heart entirely. I didn't plan on doing that twice. Well, 12 years later, God actually had the man of my prayers, which was my husband. We've now mm. been married six years with a beautiful Aww. two-year-old son. Aww. And I could not have imagined Josh, the man that God had for me, but he knew that for me, I had an idol of marriage. That's where I was sick. Mm. That's really interesting yeah, because I was that, disease for that. people that are struggling with that concept, I know you're a PK kid, I'm a PK kid. Mm -mm. PK, no. Gangster kid. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's one of those things, you kind of grow up and you put, you, you tend to put God in a box okay, and you lose your identity. Let me clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> he just was not, he was a Christian, but <laughs> kind of went off the beaten path sure, anyway. Sure. So, Daddy. <laughs> You're so hilarious. Oh my goodness. But we do, we put God in our box, right? We have our dreams and they don't al align you, with his. They sometimes. don't align with him. Now, how can you at that point just auto align straight mm -hmm. with what God's mm -hmm. true purpose and walk in that purpose because you hard. can be blinded. Yeah. You can be blinded and say, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that you wanted were Good absolutely things. wonderful oh, things. Oh, absolutely. And Nothing. It's the will of God, right? right. You mentioned it's, something as a disease you had. Mm -hmm. It was a disease I had in the sense that I wanted what God's hand could give me, not just Him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get married until I was 31. I thought that was ancient. I told my mom, by the time I'm 31, I'm going to have three or four kids, and I'm not going to do what you did. She got married at 31. Well, sure enough, I did. So from 19 being engaged, and you I had to in the wait. process. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to. You're okay. Um, but I think to answer your question, pain mm. yeah. and grief mm -hmm. and letting that process take place. I knew God delivered me yes. in 2005, but it did not hurt any less. That's right. And I still had to wait. I thought I knew what waiting was at 19. Yeah. I had to wait for God's will. And as you said too, mm. Sandra, we do want his will. But here's the thing, growing up in a, in a relationship with the Lord as I did, I wanted his will. I just wanted it my way. Yeah. That's not accurate. That's not the truth. That's not what the scripture desires us to have. We want to want his will, his way. Right. And when I came that close, to getting my way. Mm. And I saw the dead end road that would mm. be, a lifeless marriage. After the fact. Oh, yeah. it was just God, you delivered me. It hurt, it's painful, it's embarrassing. Did I mishear you? I have to wait now, I have to do this process over again. I'm gonna be old when I get married, you know, all of those things. <laughs> and yet the Lord said, Sarah, yeah. I am your life. Mm. It is not your husband, it is not your ministry. I'm your life and yes. you have to know that. And yes. so for, for me, it took pain. Yes. And I think it's in all of our stories. I think pain, and that's really even this verse, pain yes. is a intentional part of our story. Yes. You know, and sometimes it is decisions we've made. It's self-inflicted Yes. pain. Um, other times it's getting so stuck in God. This is the picture. And if you don't do it this way, then I'm walking away from you. Yeah. And isn't that a self, a, a form of pride? Absolutely. Yeah, so oh, an, ent an entitlement. <laughs> yes. And so when he took me to that verse, 1 Peter 5, 10, Sarah, there is a purpose in suffering. Yeah. I'm going to allow this. It's me. Yes. I brought you to this point six, seven weeks out from your wedding day. I brought you to the point where you had to then walk a crossroads. You're either going to fear man or you're going to fear me. Mm. And you're, I'm going to be your life, yes. not just your Lord and your Savior. I'm going to be everything to you. And doesn't he say that in his word? Oh, I am the way. I am the way. The truth, the truth and, and the life. life. 
and, and we can yes. get it theologically, but have we get it, have, do yes. we have it experientially? Right. And so for me, establish her, this ministry, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew, God, you want to establish me. Mm. You want to do those things. You want to perfect my identity in you. You want to confirm that you do have a call in my yeah. life. No matter what our story holds, no matter what darkness or light your story holds, he has a, a calling on your yeah. life and he wants to strengthen you to fulfill that. And then he ultimately wants to be the source of your identity, of everything you are. Mm. Establish her, you know, and that's what he did to me. It was just an invitation between God and I. You made a comment earlier that was um, so powerful that I think, and I could be gravely wrong, but um, a lot of people miss it. And mm -hmm. that is, he said on the cross, it is finished. Mm -hmm. We have to live grasping that it is finished, meaning everything he nailed to the cross was for, he exchanged places with Amen. us. We didn't have to go through Absolutely. that suffering, right. but he took it and said, yes. it is finished. Yes. So even though he walks us, walks with us through Absolutely. the sufferings that we, like you said, I said, brought self-inflicted mm -hmm. on our <laughs> own, um, th just through choices, mm -hmm. we have to remember it is finished. And that is hard it is. to remember. Yes. Sure. And sometimes I find some, I remember someone saying, you don't have to chant it. Oh, I do. <laughs> it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. You know, yeah, I have to remind yes, myself yes. because it is hard, mm -hmm. especially when you see your children, like your parents, mm -hmm. you know, seeing you go through sure. that or yes. what we were talking about earlier yeah, when sure. we see ours. So this is powerful. You well, know, I love that you said that, Julie, because it takes me to a moment with my daddy that we had right as the engagement was oh. on pause. We, don't, we didn't know if we were gonna go forward or not. We had some advice and some counsel. And my dad said, Sarah, I need to share with you something that I prayed over you mm. before you were born. Mm. That I've waited to, pr to tell you, and I think now's the time. Mm. He said, I pray that you would not be just a Christian. That's right. And I knew in praying that, that what I was ultimately asking is that you would come to the end of yourself and to the beginning of Christ as your life. Mm. And in that prayer as your father, I didn't know what it would look like, but I knew I was praying for God to give you pain. Wow. At some level, because in all of our story, we have to get to the place where our way is a dead end and we see it. And we're brought low enough to where we go, Lord, you're not just an addition to my plan. Mm. You are it. You and are my plan. You are note, the plan. And on that note, we're going to take a brief yes. commercial break. Come back and let's just sink with that thought. Yes. God is Simmer. It. We'll see you shortly right after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. And we are continuing our conversation with Sarah regarding our identity, just relying on God's strength and not our own yes. strength. We as women, especially, mm -hmm. are doers. We are doers yes. of things. We can do it, we can do it. And we could have a great heart. Absolutely. But why are we doing what we are doing, right. Sarah? Right. Good at performing. Yeah. Right, exactly. And meeting up to the needs and of people. And we can worship our living God through that doing. Yes. But if we don't worship him and we're just mm -hmm. doing out of Absolutely. our own strength and acceptance to Absolutely. serve yeah. other people. Um, Absolutely. Acceptance, and that's where we go. Well, the verse it makes me think of, which these <laughs> ladies are reminding me of, I can't not think about scripture. His words are life, not ours. Is John chapter 15, verse oh, four, where it yes. says, abide in me yes. and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. And yet, what do we end up doing? A lot of us as women waste, and, and I, I use that word loosely, but we, we do end up wasting our time trying mm -hmm. to produce fruit on our own. Mm. And we get down the road and being in ministry now for 14, 15 years, you hear that word burnout. And yes. you hear, I'm, this is not a finished work. Yeah. I'm exhausted. God expects this of me. He, he wants me to give and to serve and to do and to be everything that my church has and to raise my kids. And, and there's not necessarily um, a bad thing to that, but there is if we get it out of order. Yes. And when God took me to that verse, he said, Sarah, he said, the first word is not do. It's be. Mm. Be is a, a synonym for abide. Yes. Just be. Be in me. Let me do through you. Mm. That's, I mean, that's the picture yes. of a vineyard, yes. Yes. right? They're all yes. over our country. And when you think about a vineyard, all the branch has to do is stay connected, stay connected to the vine. And when that happens, what gr grapes are just a byproduct. Right. right. They're not effortlessly trying mm -hmm. to, to grow themselves. They right. just happen. Right. 
Well, same thing is true. This was the last message that Jesus gave. This is what he, he decided yeah. to leave his people with. Wow. He, he could, excuse me, he could have left them with anything, but he said, abide in me. Stop working. Stop producing. Stop trying so hard. And live in what I have done. Yes. Live in my finished work. Don't add to it. Right. And let me produce fruit through you. And I think we can, as people in the church or people of service and love the Lord, we do tend to lose our focus in are we serving man, woman, or people or are we truly serving God and mm -hmm. my prayer is for the people that are actually frontline the pastors the directors mm -hmm. that are there that they are connected to that true vine mm -hmm. because lay people like myself volunteers sure. or people that want to serve rely on that as right, well to right. see the fruit and it's only out of that connection it's only out of that abiding no matter who we lead right that fruit comes mm -hmm. and a part of establish her's existence is not to be attached to a cause, right? but to actually discuss and deepen the intangibles of the Christian life. Mm. Who is Christ in me? What does it look like for Jesus to live in and out of me? Mm -hmm. How can I let him produce more of his life mm -hmm. through me? Well, the greatest way is to get out of the way right? and to stop trying to produce and work and do all this effort needlessly, but saying, Father, the one thing you've asked of me is to stay in you. To mm -hmm. abide in you. And he even says it's without faith, right? It's impossible to please him. All of our works, we could do it all. And yet without faith, without oh. believing him, just right. working and sweating to believe him so much, staying in him, then our works are kind of fruitless. Now, do you have an establish her birthday? <laughs> and do you celebrate it? You know, establish her. I've been teaching the Bible for a long time, for 15, 16 years, honestly. We actually got official nonprofit status in 2011. Okay. Yeah. I met my now husband that same year, okay. which was amazing. And so we do. We got it in June. Um, so I should. I should throw I a love that. Yes, you should. <laughs> and I love that. But the other way that I was thinking of that, too, is the fact of when you get established in that identity of Sandra, mm -hmm. stop striving, yes. and you are now... You are established, mm -hmm. you are rooted yes. in the word of God. Yes. You see, and those are moments to celebrate. Oh, and I know- As much as our salvation moment. That's what, and we were talking about that more. at the break, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we lose mm -hmm. that concept. The salvation is wonderful. That's what you need, starting you need point. starting point. But it, you can't do everything else on your own strength because exactly. where's the fruit in that? You get exactly. burned out, right? Exactly. My surrender moment, right. that, that birth date for me is March 25th, 2005. Mm. For okay. Sure. Yes. Down. I became a believer at seven years old. I don't even know what year that is now. Yes. But it was, you know, early 90s, late 80s. Yeah. Totally became a believer. But that was salvation. Yes. Let's start there, absolutely. Yes. But how then shall we now live? Day to day life, yes. surrender. I love pain bringing that. You to the bottom. That was my March 25th, which is how Establisher is even born. Yes. Was out of my brokenness. And tell us now how what Establish her, how yeah, it's bloomed, how yeah. it's grown, yeah. Yeah. and what all you do within the community yeah, yeah. with your organization. So Establish her is open to anyone. And I, I teach the scripture very just verse by verse, word for word, because he is the living word. Yes. You can fellowship with the written word and get to know the living word in ways you never thought possible. Twice a month, every other Monday, throughout the year. We do event, events throughout the summers. We have retreats in the winter, 75 to 80 women. We've got larger dinners that we do for a couple hundred different seasons. We have one in the fall. So there's just, there's a ton of experiences we do, but everything we do, even the, the Bible teaching every other Monday is to just give you as a woman that might be tired, mm. an encounter with the living Jesus to where you get to know who he is. And the more you know that, the mm -hmm. more you know who you are in him. Right. And one of our key verses is 2 Kings 19.30. There's a remnant, a small remnant. Mm. And I want to be in that remnant. Yes. That yes. take root downward to fruit upward. Mm. That is a Bible verse. I could not believe that when I saw that in the scripture. We have to focus on the root system. Right. That's the health of a tree. Yep. We get to see the fruit and the branches, but that tree is only healthy to the degree the root system is mm. healthy. So establish her, this, this organization, really it's a movement, focuses on the root system of a woman. Yeah. And not necessarily, here's what you need to do for God, here's how much you gotta work, all of these pressures. And finding your identity yeah. in a marriage, in a boyfriend, in a work, in your mother, Kids. and being a mom, um, and being a lead worshiper, which by the way, I love the first time I ever mm -hmm. heard that word, lead worshiper, mm -hmm. and the concept behind it, um, really, or, or 
put that way, I want to say, was through you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And that radically shifted mm -hmm. my mentality mm -hmm. on literally, mm -hmm. as a worship leader, one who loves to worship God in song, yeah. Yeah. that literally your posture of being a lead worshiper, it you're always, ushering yeah. the Holy Spirit, because who truly is That's right. the worship leader, exactly. right? Exactly. I don't want to take that glory from, from the Lord. So, but Amen. that's powerful. Have you encountered women in your ministry that have come and have mm -hmm. radically changed no. their lives? And can you give us an example oh, yeah. or a story and of where one? do you hold this? Oh, I'd yeah. like to know yeah. where so you, So we have a yeah. loft location in Dunwoody. Yep. And then we meet um, sometimes at our clubhouse in Peachtree Corners in our neighborhood, and then I'll even open my home. I so you can that. find all of that on establishher.org. All of our dates and calendars are up there. But just to give you an example quickly, we just had a retreat with about 50 women up in North Carolina. And one of the women, um, she had been coming and heard the truth of Scripture, but she was, she was lost. Yeah. And she would have said that. She said, you know, I knew enough to be dangerous about God, Ooh. but I didn't know Him intimately. Oh, wow. Until I began to see His That's truth good. out of His Word through yes. His ministry. And she said, Sarah, I don't know what this means and how this looks, but have you ever baptized somebody? Aww. Because she said, I met Jesus Christ for the first time and I want to get baptized wow. here and now. And I said, you know what? I've never done that. Well, we're going to do it. It's <laughs> we'll February get some water. and we're going to go get extreme. <laughs> we're doing this. Yeah. So sure enough, two women actually just in this last month got baptized and found Aww. not just their savior for yeah. the first time. Right but their shepherd. Mm. He is their source of everything. Yes, yes. He is their life, not yes. just their Lord and their Savior. And I see it over and over again. Hundreds of women wow. that may have been saved, yeah. know God, Oh yeah. but they're not alive yet. Mm. And they are coming to life. Makes you think of Lazarus, right? Yes. He was brought out of the tomb, but he was still bound. Yes. And Jesus, through establisher, is just unwinding women. And he had those around him to unbind him. Setting them free. Notice, yeah. Incredible community. And what a wonderful response, Sarah. I have to say, on yeah. your, on your, be, just your response as, I don't know how to do this, but mm -hmm. I know I'm a follower of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And because of mm -hmm. him, he makes, he Amen. gives me the authority to Amen. do that because Amen. you use his name yes. under his. It's his idea. Yes. Establisher is born through him. Is this your full time thing? So, and, and I get to be a mama to my little boy, okay. Boaz. Um, he'll turn to here mm -hmm. in a little while and get to be an incredible wife to my husband. And we get to do ministry together and get That's to pour awesome. my life into women all over. So I'm, I'm honored. It's better to be a part of what God is doing than ask him to bless what you're doing. Oh, wow, mm. well, yeah. Mm. And this was his idea. So what he starts, he maintains. I just show up. I love, so I love that. I love that. I love that. We're going to show her link, right? Yes, yes, yes. her website. Yeah. Um, and then I have a podcast too that you can go and hear okay. at sarahotdeaton.com with all archive teachings. Well, That's you're so a tremendous great. Bible teacher yeah. and you just, you pour out what God is pouring mm -hmm. in and it's palpable. I don't know if you can feel oh, yeah. it, but you can feel your passion. We built it in the green room. Yes, <laughs> yes, it. yes. I love how God weaves everything together. Yeah. Uh, one of my main things that I definitely want to go in the fall and you need to come with me and okay. Sherry too great. and everybody, all y'all. Um, <laughs> I would love to have you. Y'all need to go to the Grateful Table and that's in uh, done at uh, Berkeley Lake yeah, around Berkeley that area. Lake is okay. a beautiful outdoor chapel open to the public. Oh, wow. Um, it's all centered around living a life of just worshiping Jesus for who yes. he is, not what he does. It's called a Grateful so, Table. The Grateful yes. Table. That's so cool. Yes. Catered dinner, amazing worship, teaching outside under the stars. It's beautiful. Oh, so, and I mean, I, I love that. I love yeah. being yes, able to be like-minded women and iron sharpens iron. Yes. You know, one another thing that's been palpable and just resonating in my heart is let's stop competing with each other. Mm -hmm. We need to mm -hmm. link hands with each other and we mm -hmm. need to just make much of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Less of me, yes. more of God yes. because exactly without right. him, exalt his name. Yes, without him, we are absolutely nothing. nothing. And guess what? He, he can, can do use nothing. anybody. That's he doesn't right. have to use any one yes. of us. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so I love what you yes. said uh, that this um, person was enough to be dangerous and you yeah that that resonated that really yeah. resonated There's and my prayer is that we can actually dive into yes. the word of God love with ask it. the Holy Spirit to reveal himself yes. in and, and through he does. us and he sure does yes so I hope you have alive. been blessed with this uh, conversation we've had with Sarah yes. Sarah thank you so to be much so nice to meet thank you thank y'all so so much absolutely and I know that we will be coming back after this commercial break yes um but um, if you do want to get in contact with Sarah, please do that. Um, I know that she will be a tremendous blessing and you finding your identity, helping you find yes. your identity in Christ. Which impacts others to yes. find their identity. Yes. 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 And we'll see you right after this commercial yes. break. 
And welcome to Friends and Neighbors. Julie, yes. wasn't that an awesome conversation we had? Yes, it was so had. good. Oh, so many need to hear this. I'm so excited. Well, I know I needed to yeah, hear it. Yeah, I did too. Because sometimes yep. you do need to scale back and say, why am I doing what I am doing? And just well, make sure that we focus on When she said that lady knew enough to be dangerous, Ooh. I thought, okay, you know. We are going to be held we, accountable yes, for yes. everything that we do. And my prayer is everything that comes out of my mouth, I don't say it, I'm from Peru <laughs> sometimes. But listen, I before we go real yes. quickly, I am really looking forward. I know you're writing a book. Yes. Of the book, yeah, people, but I yeah, can't she can't, she's sworn to I secrecy. Can't, I can't tell you, but I know it's going to be it's a with, tremendous yes, blessing. It's I a can't. TBN yes. um, publishing. Awesome with TBN publishing. But listen, thank you for joining us. Yes. We love you, God loves you, and remember, you always have a friend here on Friends and Neighbors. See you next Yay. time. <laughs>